Alhamdulillah. Wa shadu an la ilaha illallah wa tu la sharika la. We bear witness there is no other God beside God and he has no partners. Assalamu alaikum. Um, any announcements? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, we have the captions going here. If it shows weird text, I probably said it, but there's a small chance I didn't say it, so just keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> uh, so today we're going to be uh, talking about, let's see if I can get this working. Oh, can enable, inshallah. Um, so I wanted to talk about this story. Um, I've been thinking about this story a lot lately, um, and there's some interesting takeaways from this. It's not a very long one. Uh, it's actually a very short story in the Quran. There's only a few verses about it. Also in the Bible, there's only a few verses about it. But there's a whole lot in there. So um, we're going to just jump straight in here, inshallah. The first murder. 527. Recite for them the true history of Adam's two sons. They made an offering, and it was accepted from one of them, but not from the other. He said, I will surely kill you. He said, God accepts only from the righteous. If you extend your hand to kill me, I am not extending my hand to kill you, for I reverence God, Lord of the universe. I want you, not me, to bear my sin and your sin. Then you end up with the dwellers of hell, such is the requital for the transgressors. His ego provoked him into killing his brother. He killed him and ended up with the losers. God then sent a raven to scratch the soil to teach him how to bury his brother's corpse. He said, woe to me, I failed to be as intelligent as this raven and bury my brother's corpse. He became ridden with remorse. Um, I'm also going to read 532, grossness of murder. Because of this, we decreed for the children of Israel that anyone who murders any person who had not committed murder or horrendous crimes, it shall be as if he murdered all the people. And anyone who spares a life, it shall be as if he spared the lives of all the people. Our messengers went to them with clear proofs and revelations, but most of them, after all this, are still transgressing. So, um, what are the, you know, baseline takeaways from this storyline? Um, one, murder is bad. Okay, that's obvious. Uh, anybody can come to that conclusion, right? Um, but the interesting thing is, in 532, it says, those... Um, Anyone who murders any person who had not committed murder or horrendous crimes, it shall be as if he murdered all the people. So it's in direct relation to this storyline. And why is that? The way I think about it is, Cain killed a huge chunk of the population of Earth at that time, right? <laughs> it's just, there's a few of them, right? And he killed his brother. That's a big deal. That's like killing a lot of people, right? If you think about it. If you think about all of the descendants of uh, Abel, right, that could have been, that's a huge chunk of humanity. Um, that just disappeared. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's a pretty interesting thing to think about. Um, but even more interesting is, um, why did Cain kill Abel, right? What, what was it that uh, God, obviously there was an offering, and Cain's offering was not accepted. But what, what made it so egregious? What made it so bad that it caused him to commit the first murder, right? Um, that's a pretty heavy statement, right, or a pretty heavy action to, uh, you know, kill your own brother, let alone, you know, commit the first murder. That's, that's a pretty big deal. So there's a whole lot going on under the scenes here. Um, and I'm going to read also some verses from the Bible to give us a little bit more context, inshallah. Um, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. And said, I have gotten a man for the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And, thy, and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thou countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So this, this is a, these are actually also very interesting verses. Um, and I want to concentrate a little bit on verse 7, um, because it, it, it kind of illuminates a very important thing. God is telling Cain, okay, you didn't do well. What are you going to do now? Are you going to fix yourself or are you going to let sin come in? Are you going to let these thoughts 
take over your, you know, being and make you do things that you don't want to do, right? Um, and that's, that's a pretty heavy statement. And even in 527, um, uh, Cain is telling Abel, I'm going to kill you, right? And Abel says, God doesn't accept, uh, God accepts only from the righteous. So it's very apparent to everybody in this situation that Cain has something going on. He's not right. There, there's, there's something going on with this guy, and he's really taking it too far. He's taking this very personally, right? Um, but why is he taking it so personally? Uh, and the answer is, is, is pretty simple. The answer is envy. Envy is the feeling of wanting what somebody else has so deeply that you would be willing to take it from them. And these are the deep desires that Satan kind of planted in Cain's mind and which led him to killing his own brother. Now, let's try and understand a little bit more what happened next. Um, Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Um, so, a couple interesting things happened here. One question, one thing is, God knew exactly what was going on. But he asked Cain directly, he said, what happened? Where's, Cain, where's Abel, right? And Cain's response was really out of line. He said, am I my brother's keeper? Obviously, the answer is yes, right? Cain is the older brother. He was born first. Um, it's his responsibility to take care of his younger brother. But he says to God, that's not my responsibility. I don't know what's up with him. Who cares what happened to Abel, right? Wild statement, especially saying it directly, like it's direct defiance of the creator of the universe. I mean, think about that. That's pretty wild. Um, and, and then uh, uh, we, we can see, actually, if we, if we go back, there's, there's another verse that's interesting in the Quran. It says, um, God then sent a raven to scratch the soil to teach him how to bury his brother's corpse. He said, woe to me, I failed to be as intelligent as this raven and bury my brother's corpse. He became ridden with remorse. So this was another thing that happened, which was very interesting. It's, it's that God sent, you know, an animal to show Cain how to bury his brother. Cain didn't even think to do something like that, right? He was so enraged and, you know, overtaken by envy that he didn't even think to do even that basic sign of respect. Um, so that's when he became ridden with remorse, when he realized that he had really gone in a bad direction, um, So, um, what is envy? What's it all about? Why, why is it important? You know, okay, Cain's a really bad guy, so what? What does that have to do with me? Uh, seems like he was just, you know, really mad about some fruit, so what? Um, but there, envy is a very strong feeling, and, and, and I want to give you an idea of what that feeling looks like. Inshallah. If I can get this. Keep going. Bear with me here. Here we go. Oh. Come back. Hit the green. Thank you. Okay. No, you already know what's coming. Very nice. Look at that. Picked them up from the printers yesterday. Good coloring. That's bone. And the lettering is something called Cillian Rail. It's very cool, baby, but that's nothing. Look at this. That is really nice. Eggshell with Romalian and tight. What do you think? Nice. Jesus. <laughs> that is really super. How to knit with like you get so tasteful. <laughs> I can't believe that Bryce prefers Van Patten's card to mine. But wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. Raised lettering, pale nimbus, white. Impressive. Perfect. Mm. Let's see Paul Allen's card. 
Okay, basically what's happening in this scene, since nobody can hear it, uh, is they're just showing out business cards, right? And this guy is a sociopath. And essentially, he's like taking it way too far <laughs> with, with like examining these business cards and like, why does he like that guy's business card over my business card, right? <laughs> okay. So essentially the idea here is, right, like, envy can take many forms. It can, and it can be as simple as that. Oh, you, you need the subtitles? One sec. Okay. Can you, is it working now? Oh, yeah, okay. So essentially the, the, the point of that video is envy is just something that lives inside of you, and it can take form over anything, even arbitrary things, right, like a business card, right, uh, which honestly has zero meaning, but to somebody who has that envy so deeply embedded in their heart, it can really take over their mind and like have a huge effect over them, right? And if you watch that movie, you know what happens, but anyways, I'm not gonna go into that. Um, uh, yeah, so <laughs> we're gonna get there. Um, for now, uh, let's repent, inshallah, to Allah. Alhamdulillah, we bear witness there is no other God beside God, and he has no partners. Okay, let me grab my notes here. So I'm going to read um, Surah 20, verse 130. Um, Therefore, be patient in the face of their utterances, and praise and glorify your Lord before sunrise and before sunset. And during the night, glorify him, as well as at both ends of the day, that you may be happy. And do not covet what we bestowed upon any other people. Such are temporary ornaments of this life, whereby we put them to the test. What your Lord provides for you is far better and everlasting. So coveting is a form of kind of like wanting what somebody else has. Envy is taking it to the next step, right? Which is, I want to take that from that guy, right? Um, so the commandment to us is do not covet, right? And that, that's the 10th commandment too. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor his farm, his cattle, nor anything that is his, okay? So Cain actually violated two. One was the fifth commandment, which is don't murder, right? And the 10th commandment, obviously, which is this. Um, and that is kind of like our baseline, right? But once it gets to the level of envy, things get dark, things get weird, things get really bad, right? Um, and uh, that brings me to uh, these guys, uh, your favorite um, political party. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, why is this turning political? Um, let me answer this question very, very clearly. Um, it's not supposed to be political. What, it, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is um, that the spirit of Cain lives on, okay? Spirit of Cain <laughs> lives on in a big way. The, the spirit of Cain is more represented today than ever. Uh, and this is just one example, right? But there are many examples that we can talk about. Uh, but this is one which I think is actually pretty important because this is the one that I think is actually gaining a lot of traction nowadays. Um, and is really rooted in the same type of envy that led Cain to kill his brother. And um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, I don't want to go too deep into the ideology, but I just want to talk a little bit about what the dangers here are. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so you're thinking, you know, hey, envy, what does that have to do with me? First of all, you know, good for you if you don't have envy. We're happy for you. Um, second of all, uh, <laughs> it's important to know how envy can actually affect your daily life. Uh, I mean, this, this is one of the things that, you know, you may not have any, but other people definitely do. And when other people have strong envy, it can affect a lot of people. Um, um, so the easiest way to see the manifestation of this type of evil is in this political ideology, which is socialism. Um, and I'm not going to get too deep into what socialism is all about, but I'm just going to sum it up in a very quick way. The idea behind socialism is that there is an, an inherent problem in the system, namely capitalism, that runs society. And because there is a problem in that system, you are the one who is being victimized. And therefore, you need to be the one who rises up, takes the, away the power from those who have it, and redistributes it among everybody as a good 
virtuous person, right? Uh, you take matters in your own hands and you do it, right? So, obviously we can see there's a whole lot of envy going on even in this initial statement, right? You are envying those who have power, who are more successful than you. And you perceive it as not your fault. You perceive it as their fault, as the system's fault. And you take it upon yourself to change the system, to essentially make it better for you, right? Um, and this, uh, this kind of ideology, the socialist ideology, is a very virtuous ideology to have in today's society. It's, it's painted as like, you're such a good person if you're a socialist. You want equality for everybody, right? Um, but if we look at history, we can quickly see socialism goes a very dark route. And it embodies the spirit of Cain in a very real way. Um, because it leads to a lot of famine, murder, imprisonment, whole lot of bad things. Um, because as soon as those people who get the power and want to make changes, start making changes, ultimately their power corrupts them. And they will do whatever it takes to take away from those that they perceive to be in power. Um, so uh, let's, let's meet our two, uh, you know, anti-heroes here. Um, so first guy is uh, Joseph Stalin. Um, leader of the, uh, leader of Russia during World War II um, and was known as a very, very strong socialist voice like in, in the world, right? He was the icon of socialism at the time. Um, and his whole ideology was that there are a certain class of people in Russia that have taken everything from those who are lower class. And those people are the farmers, those who own land. So he said, those who own land are the enemy. We need to take their food. We need to take their land. They need to become part of a bigger collective, right? When that happened, they were persecuted so strongly that, that the farmers had to give away every scrap of food they have, literally. Any scraps that were left over when the soldiers came to take the food, if they took them and ate them, they would be murdered. They would be executed because that was a capital crime. It led to so much famine and destitution that all the farmers eventually died off because they had nothing to eat, right? Once all the farmers died off, then nobody in Russia could eat any food, right? Because there was nothing left to grow, okay? Then that led to widespread famine across huge uh, pieces of the population, right? That led to more blame on other people within Russia from obviously the government, which led to more imprisonment and more killing. And it led to such a huge amount of destitution and basically huge uh, amounts of um, uh, depravity and poverty um, that by the end of Stalin's reign, about over 25 million people had died in Russia just from all the different policies that they had put in place, okay? So this is exhibit A, socialism. Uh, it, does it look like a good idea to you right now? Obviously not, right? Next guy decided to even go one step further, okay? So this is Chairman Mao. Um, and the scary thing about Chairman Mao is China today actually gets a lot of their policies from when Mao was in power. So that's a little scary, but let's just move on. Um, so Mao's, Mao's enemy was the intellectuals. He said, the scientists, the engineers, the teachers, those are the people in society that have taken everything from everybody and we need to take their power away. We need to get rid of them. So obviously he'd go out and he'd kill people. He'd take those people and put them in re-education camps, essentially brainwashing them into believing that he was a god figure and um, that he was the future of China. Um, and he... He was very sensitive to anybody who did not have absolute loyalty to the political party. If there was even a hint of anybody having any sort of dissent or even a look where he didn't like, right, he would just get him killed. That was the type of power and depravity that he had in his mind, all driven by envy. These two people, all of this driven by envy, they were both raised extremely poor in super impoverished places before that they became these people, right? And their envy led them to take absolute power and completely destroy their countries, completely destroy them. Um, and these two are single-handedly the, the two people who have led to the most deaths um, through any sort of political system ever, surpassing Hitler by a mile. Like, these guys are in a league of their own, right? Um, so 
you get an idea. You know, hey, the the ideas rooted in this very sinister feeling can lead to some very dark places um, and really have a huge effect on, you know, society and also the world. So, you know, coming back to us, So yeah, it's a little morbid. Sorry, um, <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to, you know, get so, you know, I did, but you know, hey, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit about this uh, chapter. It's a very important one. Um, Surah one thirteen, daybreak. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak from the evils among his creations, from the evils of darkness as it falls, from the evils of the troublemakers, from the evils of the envious when they envy. So this, this last verse, once I started doing uh, a little bit of research on this topic, this last verse meant a lot more to me because I can see there's a, there's a lot of darkness in those who, who carry envy in their hearts. Um, and we need to be extra, extra careful. We need to implore God to protect us from people like this and also make absolute sure that any hint of, of you know, jealousy or envy in our hearts is completely eliminated. Because we see it's a really slippery slope. People, and the danger of it is this. The danger of it is, is that it completely takes the responsibility off of your shoulders. When you are in this type of mentality, you believe everything around you. I mean, Cain, for example, he believed the system he was in. He was on earth. He was one of the first humans ever born, right? Previous to that, it was heaven. So he's coming here. Now he has to work for everything he's got. It's not what it used to be. He's in a much different situation. To put it on on top of that, now he's working, he's giving offerings, and they're not getting accepted. And he's saying, what's going on, man? Like, this this system, I don't like it. I don't like being here. I I, I don't want to be here anymore, right? This system is bad. Instead, what he should have done is said, there's something wrong with me, right? And that's really the fault the, the switch that is not turned yet in a lot of these people's minds is they have not yet accepted personal responsibility for their problems. And this is something that, you know, thank God, in the Quran is really driven. Your problems are your own. It's nobody else's problems. If you ever point at anybody else and say, they are the reason this is happening to me, you have failed. You've already failed. Because your first step should be, it's my problem, right? And if you do that enough, it can lead to this type of stuff. Um, and we got to be really, really careful with, with, with these type of feelings um, that we never have this towards another person. Those that we love, uh, those that we don't love, I mean, it doesn't matter. These feelings can really affect the mind in a very dark way. Um, so in the United States, and I'll just, I'll just make this one point, um, This ideology is gaining a whole lot of traction. Um, And, you know, I don't like seeing it, but it's happening. And I think a lot of it is coming from a younger generation who believe that, who actually don't know about the history of it, who don't know that there is really a dark history to socialism and to these political ideologies. And I think it's really important that, you know, as submitters, we emphasize uh, the ideas that are left to us by uh, the messenger about freedom, right? And how freedom really plays a part in differentiating us from those who are, you know, really wicked and evil people who would seek to take it away from others. Um, And that's a really important thing is because nowadays this is becoming uh, a sign of virtue of like, I love everybody, therefore I want to redistribute the wealth, therefore I want to uh, take power into my own hands and, and do what Stalin and Mao could never do. I want to I wanna create a communist state, right, that is perfect, right? And, and who is the one who can do such a thing? Who is the one, right? Do, do people really believe that they have the power to do such a thing? No, no such power exists in the human mind, right? Nobody can weigh the scales so perfectly. God is the only one who is capable of controlling all those aspects, all those variables, right? Um, so it's very important for us to understand that um, this is a, a very dangerous thing. And uh, ultimately, we should be a strong voice against it, inshallah, um, and uh, understand the underlying causes and the feelings that go into it. Um, So with that, let's pray.